Breaking news alert coming from Bentop Hospital, where an all clear has been given after a shooting scare. Reports of a shooting caused an evacuation and made for a chaotic scene for about two hours at the hospital. Good evening, I'm Lauren Freeman. I'm Bill Maessa. Thank you for joining us. You saw it unfold first live right here on Channel 2. You can see the vantage point from our Sky 2 helicopter, a heavy police presence outside Bentop Hospital. Tonight we have team coverage. Phil Archer has a look at the investigation itself, but we're going to begin with Jonathan Martinez. He spoke with people who were inside when the reports of a shooting sparked chaos. Again? Yeah, guys, everything out here at Bintab Hospital is back to normal, but that was certainly not the case just a couple of hours ago when there were reports of shots fired and plenty of chaos. A lot of people inside the hospital not knowing what actually was going on. At that time, security was coming up, and so everybody was running, and we did hear some loud noises, not quite sure what we heard, but it was real loud and stuff. You know, everybody was panicking, and it was just people just going crazy. They just said to stay calm. We got the doors locked. You know, no, don't worry about you know, anybody getting in because they, you know, most of the hospital doors have a locking mechanism on them and they, they're automatic locks that have to buzz you in. So we were pretty secure, but, you know, still people were pre pretty shaken up. And the reports of a possible suspect and shots fired came in at around 2 o'clock this afternoon and almost immediately there was a code white paged over the hospital intercom for a possible active shooter situation. Many patients, visitors and even staff started to evacuate the hospital as dozens of officers and SWAT team members shut down the immediate area and they went in. Shortly after, authorities swept each floor of the hospital saying they had not found any suspect or any evidence of an actual shooting. HPD was the lead agency on this case, but there were also Harris County Sheriff's deputies out out on the scene. We talked to the sheriff just a couple of moments ago. It seems that the building's been secured now. It apparently started when somebody heard what they thought were gunshots. They were reported, obviously started evacuation, uh, but it looks like now the building's been secure. We're starting to let personnel in. Now, the hospital has resumed normal operations, but we are being told that there will be at least a deputy or maybe even an officer on each one of the floors as a precautionary measure and also to help ease some nerves out there as well. Uh, in the meantime, that investigation does remain ongoing. We are reporting live from Bintub Hospital. I'm Jonathan Martinez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Jonathan, thank you. We continue our team coverage tonight with Phil Archer. Phil has been covering this for us all afternoon. So what's the latest tonight, Phil? Well, you can see uh, at the emergency room entrance, a lot quieter now, a lot more chaotic. Just earlier this afternoon, around 2 p.m. is when that report came into police of shots fired inside the hospital building. What we were told by police sources is that the report was there was a man up on the second floor in the, uh, in the section, the eye, ear, nose, and throat section, that had become irritated, pulled a pistol, and fired into the ceiling. Well, as soon as those reports, multiple reports, began coming in to police, they, called a co they pulled a code white. I think uh, Jonathan just mentioned it. Code white means active shooter in the hospital. And at that point, they began evacuating employees, some employees and patients, while at the same time locking down the hospital and locking in other employees and patients uh, while the SWAT floor swarmed the building. Now, the SWAT officers moved through every floor, searching it from top to bottom. They did a second search with a dog. Uh, they never found that suspect. And according to Chief Art Acevedo, didn't find any signs of a shooting either. Multiple individuals heard someone yell very loudly, distinctly, drop the gun, drop the gun. And shortly thereafter, they heard two distinct loud bangs. That's from multiple people that we have debriefed. We still have not found physical evidence of an, act, of an actual shooter. Uh, we haven't found any damage, any casings, and we have not found, thank God, anybody has been injured or shot. They got the all clear around 4 o'clock, uh, uh, just shortly after that. A group of fifth graders, a fifth grade class from St. Mark's School that had been in the hospital, they came here today to give artwork to patients. Well, they were inside when the code white went out. Uh, they were locked down on the sixth floor, and that's where they remained while SWAT officers went through searching. Uh, after about two hours of the search uh, with no suspect found, uh, the officers declared it all clear. The kids came out, everybody fine. Uh, no one hurt in any of this that we're aware of. Uh, and at this point, police still trying to figure out exactly what happened here. Reporting live at Pintop Hospital, Phil Archer, KPRC Channel 2 News. Phil, thank you. Great job out there today. This is video just coming into our newsroom from inside Bentob. The fourth floor, this is from a patient around 3.45 p.m. when they were in a conference room 
Watch as SWAT officers come in to check on them. Let's listen. Everybody's okay, right? Yeah, but everybody's, but everybody's okay. So, all right. We're going to have officers continually open all the floors. So again, stay here. The patient tells us even though the all clear was given, he was finally allowed out of the conference room around four o'clock. We are continuing to follow all developments on this breaking news story on air and online. We'll, of course, stream any additional news conferences that happen at click2houston.com. More breaking news right now, this time from Galveston, where two people were found dead in a home there yesterday. We have just learned from investigators they believe this was, in fact, a murder-suicide. Byron Everts and his wife, Dulce, were found dead in their home. Detectives say it appears Mr. Everett shot his wife in the chest with a small revolver, then shot himself in the chest. It's not clear what led to the shooting. That part of the investigation is ongoing. President Donald Trump's administration today announced strict enforcement of immigration rules, which could ultimately mean rapid deportations of some undocumented immigrants. Local groups are concerned about what this is going to mean for families already living here in Houston. Channel 2's Ryan Korsgaard joining, joining us live from downtown with reaction to this. Ryan? Bill, the White House tells us it is following the law. Critics say something different. They say it tears families apart. <laughs> following loud immigration protests all across the country, coming new orders from the Department of Homeland Security to put into place the president's plan to increase immigration enforcement. That means millions of undocumented people living in the United States could be thrown out. I tell you what, my primary concern is that families are torn apart by what's going on right now. They have been torn apart before, but this is going to enhance the tearing apart of families. The memos tell all agents to capture and quickly deport every single undocumented immigrant. Those who have been convicted of a crime would have the highest priority. The Greater Houston Coalition for Justice says it is preparing. We're getting some commitments that we will be prepared to address whatever issue that unconstitutional or, in, or very unhuman. The directive also requires undocumented immigrants caught entering the country to be jailed instead of released until their hearing date. This directive calls for building more jails, increases the ability of local police to help in immigration enforcement, and calls for hiring 10,000 more immigration agents. My children are American citizens. I don't want them to be treated any differently than anybody else, only because of the color of our skin or how we look. And we are getting new information from the White House tonight. They are saying that mass deportation is not the goal in this case, also saying that it is prioritizing the removal plan for illegal immigrants. We're live downtown. Ryan Korsgaard, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Ryan, thank you. Now to a developing story. The families of four Texas men are mourning their loss after a small plane crashed into a shopping mall in Australia. Now, these four men from the Austin area were on a golf trip when they're with their wives when their plane went down. Now, one of the men, John Washburn, pictured here, has a daughter who lives here in Houston. We spoke with her this afternoon by phone. Sarah Donchi joins us in our newsroom with what she had to say. Sarah? Bill, right away in our phone conversation with Davis Griffin, it was obvious how much she loved her dad remembered him as a family man and a man who was pursuing his passion of golf. What was a dream vacation for John Washburn ended suddenly and tragically when a plane he was in crashed Tuesday in Melbourne, Australia, killing him, three friends and their pilot. Washburn's daughter Davis Griffin lives in Houston and remembers her father fondly. He's thoughtful and he's calm and he's kind. And he was really, really smart. And he was a really good dad. Washburn, a retired attorney, lived near Austin. An avid golfer, he took a trip with his wife and three other couples to Australia to play the game he loved. A couple months ago, um, they call it shooting your age. He shot a 67, which is how old he is. And it's like a big deal for all the guys because it's just an amazing round. And, you know, so he just had done that and was really excited about that. Washburn had been married for nearly 45 years. His daughter and extended family will soon fly to Australia to remember the father, grandfather, and husband they so dearly loved. He was pursuing what he loved to do. I mean, he was pursuing his passion, so I guess, you know, that gives him comfort, right? What a sad day for all of those families. John Washburn leaves behind two children and four grandchildren. He was 67 years old. 
The wives of all of those men are still in Australia. None of the women were on that flight, though. Nobody else inside the mall was hurt in the impact. The cause of the crash, though, is still under investigation. Live from the newsroom, Sarah Donchi, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you, Sarah. We're following a breaking news alert for you right now. A federal judge has blocked Texas from cutting off Medicaid dollars to Planned Parenthood. Texas took action against Planned Parenthood in 2015 after secretly recorded videos were taken by anti-abortion activists that caused a great deal of controversy. A thief ends up unconscious and it was caught on camera. Coming up, how he managed to knock himself out during a heist. What a day this afternoon. Lots of blue sky out there. Temperatures right there in the mid-70s. In fact, we got up to 77 this afternoon. A wonderful afternoon. It's going to be a cool night. And then we're going to see lots of sunshine as we continue through the week. We're going to see some changes too. Short sleeves, but for how long? The forecast is straight ahead. And an update now on a pit bull who was used as a bait dog in spring. How Calvin is doing now after surgery. As we head into break, here's Lester Holt with a look at what's ahead on this evening's NBC Nightly News. Lester. Bill and Lauren ahead for us tonight. The president speaks about the wave of threats against Jewish community centers across the country. We'll have details of the fiery plane crash in Australia and the Texans who were among the victims. Plus, as actor David Cassidy announces his battle with dementia, we take a close look at its many forms and causes on NBC Nightly News right after Channel 2 News at 5. New at 5, an update on a story that touched many hearts when it first aired. A pit bull named Calvin that was used as a bait dog in spring is doing well tonight after having surgery to repair a joint in its hind limb. We are told the surgery was successful and that the dog is scheduled to go home with its adopted family. We have new information for you tonight and a story that we brought you as breaking news in our newscast this morning. SWAT officers surrounding a motel in southwest Houston. A short time later, police made an arrest at America's Inn and Suites off the southwest freeway. Channel 2's Kathy Hernandez was the first reporter on the scene and spoke to the man arrested and his family. They said I had a hostage in there. Now they're saying that I own a shotgun. I don't have no weapons. But police say they recovered this shotgun, video you'll only see on two, in Corinthian Phillips' room. They say he pointed it at some people during an argument in the parking lot of the America's Inn and Suites early Tuesday morning. They say a security guard watched it on surveillance video and called police. Officers say Phillips was in room 252, along with three other adults and three children. People in the room refused to cooperate with the officers. One of them was Phillips' brother, Deshaun White. We feel like we didn't do anything, so like, what's the point of y'all harassing us? And Police say they learned Phillips, who rented the room, is a convicted felon. They called in the SWAT team. They was like, oh, like, oh, come out and stuff, and that we got the building surrounded and stuff like that. So we were like, we just gonna go ahead, you know, there's kids up in there and stuff. We don't want no, no kids to get hurt or nothing like that. Officers arrested Phillips. At 21, he's been arrested several times. Convicted of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon back in 2012. He served two years in prison. They just trying to find a reason to arrest me because I closed the door in some officer's face. I'm gonna beat this and come home and, man, it just is what it is. I don't care. Police say they also found crack cocaine and marijuana inside this room at this motel. Phillips will now be charged with a felon in possession of a firearm. All three children, ages two years old, four months old, and two months old, are now with family members. Reporting in Southwest Houston, Kathy Hernandez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Kathy, thank you. Topping news around the nation now. Two men had to be rescued when their boat capsized in a Florida lake. Here's the video. It was shot Saturday morning by the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. The men told officials that the boat began taking on water and then overturned, as you see here, about 10 minutes later. Well, a rescue helicopter spotted the boaters and then they dropped emergency inflatable devices to keep them afloat until a rescue boat arrived. The men made their way to that boat where rescue crews pulled them out of the water. Crews outside of Philadelphia are cleaning up a collision involving three train cars. Police say all the trains were out of service at the time. The crash knocked a few cars off the tracks during the busy rush hour today. Two passengers and two train operators were hurt. One operator was critically injured. You're going to want to see this. It's a wild story out of Akron, Ohio. A thief knocks himself unconscious during a smash and grab. The moment caught on camera here. Man was with a group of folks who broke into a liquor store. He fell over the counter, as you can see here, and knocked himself out cold. His accomplices had to run back in and drag him, as you see, to their getaway car. <laughs>
Good Thanks laugh. did not appear you to can't make You can't make stuff like this up. You don't have video. It's going to get hard to believe, something like that. Yeah, but you saw it right there. Yeah, that's what Well, here's I, a Texas yeah. watchdog. Yep, that's, well, that's a good a, thing. Well, that's not one yep. I want to come across. That'll after. work. <laughs> I mean, That'll looks work. like he's in somebody's driveway right there in Fulshire. Alligator in Cross Creek Ranch in Fulshire. Mike McKenzie storm pinned that. So just for our out-of-town friends who may not know we have mm -hmm. pets like that. <laughs> in the meantime, we have weather like this all the time. Normal high 67. We made it to 77. The record, though, 89. So you got to get to the upper 80s now to get into the record territory. But we're close. We're feeling pretty good. 77, 74. 80 is the record in Galveston. Speaking of which, nice days. 75 wins out of the north at 12. Humidity is that 51% is about the highest that I can find here. Southwest freeway, we're at 41%. Northwest winds at 14 in the 70s. So everybody gets the 70s right now. That's not a bad temperature for February. And look at the humidity, 27, 41, 31 in Pearland, 36 at Hobby. So this dry air is coming in on these strong northwest winds, averaging 10 to 15 miles an hour with gust even to 21, 18 miles an hour, 24 in Pearland. So nice breezy afternoon. I think we'll see a bit of a breezy evening as as well. So the temperatures will go down tonight into the mid 50s. It'll take them a while to get there, but they will 54, 55, 56 degrees at 6 a.m. So some chilly sweater weather to wake up to tomorrow and then we're up to 80 degrees. So it's going to be a cool night, but a warm afternoon. As we go into Wednesday, it gets even warmer for Thursday and Friday because of a system coming out of Northern California. But this is a real troublemaker for these folks out here. They have winter storm warnings for as much as two feet of snow in the higher elevations. All of the elevations on the Sierra are under avalanche warnings. Winds are gusting to 100 miles an hour. The flood threat through all of Northern California and to Central California continues through Thursday. This 